Hey there Taurus, welcome back to my channel. If you enjoy my readings, please be sure to like and subscribe. And let me know if this reading resonates with you. Alright, so let me give it another quick little shuffle. I've actually already shuffled them quite a bit, but let's do it a little bit more. So tonight we're going to do a... The Wild Unknown Tarot, which has to do with uh, your subconscious mind, demons that you might be hiding, or anything that to do with like your your um, archetypes. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry, my nose is itching. I got a kitty in the house, a little kitty. I have little bitty baby kitties. Well, um, one of them. Got a little sick, so I had to bring her in in case you hear her crying. Mommy's caring for her. So we've got the chariot. This is the answer to your question. So whatever it is that's been bothering you, anything that's been driving you crazy, the chariot is the answer to your question. And let's pull a narcissist card. All right, we've got a dependent narcissist here right there right next to the chariot. Now, the chariot's usually like, you know, you are being pulled in multiple directions. And this this particular chariot is a little bit different, though. It, it It's not exactly the traditional chariot card. It says that the chariot is your confidence and you and your inner warrior. Okay, let me reread that for you here. The chariot is your confidence and your will and your inner warrior at parts uh, at points in your life when you felt the bliss of achievement or triumph you were riding this you were riding on his back but uh, build a relationship with this part of yourself try to see the chariot inside you the more focused your mind the easier it will be to sense his presence and stay mounted on his back with a fixed gaze and a sure footing you will be headed towards all of your dreams all right so that's that's really great um i kind of like i just feel like this particular reading that it's more traditional um meaning of being pulled in two different directions is probably closer because it's got the dependent narcissist card here it says, what can you do if you're dealing with a dependent narcissist? Uh, put down boundaries. Do not do things for the vulnerable narcissist that they can do for themselves. And that will help them to come over, overcome the dependency. Do not allow them to volunteer to help you if they don't genuinely want to. Also, keep physical relationships on the back burner. Don't ask them for favors and deny the access to hurt you. And also, um, if this all resonates with you, be sure to talk to a professional. If it's um, something like this, you've got self-centered, disagreeable, arrogant, externalized anger, not trusting others, sensitive to criticism. Okay, yes, narcissists are very sensitive to criticism. They can definitely dish it out, but they cannot take it. All right, so we've got the Ten of Wands for your factors affecting the situation. Hold on, the card just flew all the way across the room. All right, this actually doesn't go to this deck. <laughs> I haven't finished this one. But it says atheists. So we're going to put it down anyway, but we're going to still pull another card. And see if we can't come up with a legit reason. You know, I got all these cards in here. But don't go to this deck. Okay, here we go. Oh, this is a Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse card. 
defensiveness. All right, and um, this is Dr. Gottman, and it's like this, the cycle um, starts with criticism, and then the next person who um, has to do with this four horsemen of the narcissistic apocalypse, basically, whenever you criticize someone or you're being criticized, the opposite person is going to be defensive, right? And then... In turn, the person who is receiving this uh, defensiveness, they're going to feel, you know, they're going to start to, I, with a back, uh, for lack of a better term, um, you know, they're going to hate you for it. Um, but that's not the right word. What is it? Hold on just a second. I'm going to pull it up real quick. <sighs> Okay, so um, the four horsemen are number one, criticism, number two, defensiveness, number three, stonewalling, and number four is contempt. I think they're out of order though. So what happens is you start with the criticism and then the other person gets defensive and then they just stonewall you or you start to feel contempt for them. Now this is a warning sign that if you see this cycle happening in your relationship that you could end up being divorced or even worse. So um, make sure that you take um, precautions and let's take a look here and see what this Ten of Wands says. Ten of Wands says, Burdens, Blockage, and Difficulty. The Ten of Wands is a difficult card to face. Mental or physical burdens have been weighing on your spirit. Over time, this leads to hopelessness, depression, and you simply can't get through to what you want. You cannot see the way. If this card appears in response to a person or a situation, it may be best to simply walk away. But if this card comes up frequently, it indicates that you are attracted to negativity and that you should choose, you should choose, you choose, you choose to walk the hard road. Okay. So that is that is something that a lot of us do, unfortunately. Um, you know, my mom always said happiness is a choice and you choose to either be happy or struggle. All right. So then we got the justice card. All right. So this is, um, two cats and their tails are entwined and they're looking back at you and they're saying, which one are you going to choose, right? So let's take a look and see what Narcissus card comes up. <sighs> Narcissus that plays the victim. This is the type of person that would stage a crime and make people feel bad for them. How do you deal with this type of victim mentality? Take action. Change your ways. Help others in need. Reacting to a victim. Do not be an anti-victim in anti-victim mindset. Do not try to logically argue with a victim. Help them find a solution. Preserve, uh, persevere, I'm sorry, with them. So they were going through a hard time and, um, and you might be like, you know, feeling like, gee, they're, uh, they're not really helping their situation any, but, you know, that's for them to realize, they will eventually realize it, um, that they've got to get over that, that shadow, that shadow self, 
um, that's holding them back, but you can't help them do it. Nobody can help them do it. You can help them see that they need to do it. You can help them guide them towards the light, but people will not change until they're absolutely ready to change. Okay, and let me read the justice card for you. With tails entwined, two cats look directly at you, waiting for you to choose between them. That's not what I said. All right, uh, let's see. Which is right and which is wrong? The justice card implies a weight of heaviness surrounding a choice that you have to make. Now is not the time to shun the concept of divine balance or karma. All of your choices affect your life and sometimes the lives of those around you, both n now and in the future. Oh, oh excuse me. I'm sorry, it's getting late, y'all. All right. So, if this person who's, you know, needing justice might be feeling like a victim, and your next card is the Son of Pentacles, and your final outcome is the Ace of Pentacles. All right, so let's take a quick look here. Um, the Son of Pentacles may be um, someone who's faking you out. Let's see. Pentacles are Capricorn, Virgo, and Taurus. Son of Pentacles. Oh my goodness, I'm so tired, y'all. The good side of the Son of Pentacles is that he's a loyal and determined. He's inventive and can be trusted wholeheartedly. But sometimes this figure can be stubborn and persistent to a fault. This combined with the quiet nature results in his being hard to get to know and socially awkward. At times, he commonly has only one or two close friends rather than many. All right. And he may be faking you out, whoever this is, Son of Pentacles. All right. I'm sorry. It is not Son of Pentacles. It's the Son of Cups. All right. Well, Cups... um. Or water signs okay so that would um, be um, water signs are Scorpio Pisces and Gemini I think Gemini no Gemini is air hold on y'all I'm still so horrible I can't remember cancer it's the water sign all right so let's go ahead and look at the Ace of Pentacles and let's pull a Narcissus card as the imposter, sim in imposter Syndrome. So even though you got the Ace of Pentacles over here, which is a pretty good card, I think this deck is so different. I, I don't ever know what it's going to say. I, I, I'm getting the feel for it. I'm finally starting to get the hang of it, but... It's definitely a little bit different than your traditional cards. So let's take a look at the Ace of Pentacles. And it says, in the center, okay, so this one has to do with prosperous beginnings. In the center of even the giant redwood trees is a tiny seedling once stood such as the energy of the Ace of Pentacles. It's the seed that takes root, grounding you for the future. 
you're in the beginning phase of a prosperous venture. Stay grounded. Go outside. Take time to appreciate nature. You may also find a windfall of wealth headed your way. And it says imposter syndrome is your narcissist card. So uh, imposter syndrome is um, a collection of inadequacies despite your success. You still feel like a bad person. Even though you're not doing anything bad, you feel like a fake. All right, there's that word fake again. All right, so maybe it's not um, somebody else that's being fake. Maybe it's you who feels like you're, you know, you might feel like you have imposter syndrome. Like, um, you know, sometimes whenever everything just falls in your lap and everything feels good and positive, you know, you're just not like ready for it because maybe you've struggled for a long time. And this imposter syndrome can really, um, imposter syndrome can make you feel like you're not who you say you are. But, um, but don't let that drag you down. If that is the case, just move forward and, uh, everything will work itself out. Okay. So let's drag a grim card up and see if we can come up with a moral. To the story. All right, so the moral of the story is Cinderella. It's not what you know, but who you know. <laughs> okay, I can think of a couple other morals to that story, but true that. It is not, it's not a lie. All right, so I hope that um, sheds some light on whatever it is that you've been struggling with. And uh, please be sure to come back, and if you haven't already subscribed, please hit the subscribe button right now and leave me a comment if the reading does indeed resonate and y'all come back and see me next week. Good night.